Hello, and welcome back to the channel. We hope you are all doing great. Today, we listen to stories about people who have things that still haunt them to this day. If you enjoy the video, be sure to like and subscribe. When I was in my senior year of high school, about 10 years ago, I used to go to an arcade to play DDR with a group of friends. We came from all over the city to play the game, and we all met through either the game or a friend of a friend, which is what makes this next part so weird. We'll call him Kith, short for Kid in the Hat. He was a short guy who was really timid and hardly even spoke. He was always there with us, though, taking turns in rotation, joining us after the arcade would shut down to go eat, going over to a friend's house to drink, and such. We would even go with Kith to his old beat-up Plymouth sometimes to just hang out and bullshit after the arcade closed while we decided what to do. He never parked at the arcade, he always parked in a somewhat run-down business complex with a bunch of suites and a weird parking lot with lots of little nooks to hide in. It was ideal because no one would bother us there while my friend smoked, drank, or whatever. One night at Carl's Jr., Kith tells us a really sad story about being abused by his mother his whole life. He ran away, had never looked back, and was now homeless. He was most definitely around the same age range as us, and he did always look a bit unkempt, so the story wasn't that hard to believe. To cheer him up, one of the girls in our group who always carried around a camera took a few Polaroids of us all together and gave them to him. A bunch of us offered to let him stay for a while since none of us had any idea about this situation, but he refused. About a week later, back at the arcade, we had all gotten together for our normal routine when Kith never showed up. We all started talking about him, and then it dawned on us that none of us knew his name. He had never been formally introduced because he wasn't anyone's friend of a friend, he was just always sort of there. He didn't make a lot of noise or was ever involved in group drama, so it never dawned on any of us that none of us knew who he actually was, even though we had hung out with him for the better part of a year. We went to check the parking lot, and the car is gone. This bothered us all for a long time, but we all just kind of drifted apart through the years, everyone went off to college, joined the military, or even just bugged off to another country. In the time that some of us stayed together, we would always check that parking spot for his car, never to find it there. About a year ago, I picked up going back to the arcade for nostalgia's sake, mind you, about a 7-8 to eight year gap now here. About the third time I had gone, it dawned on me to check the complex's parking lot next to the arcade. Lo and behold, the car is there. It was around midnight, and while excited, I was generally unnerved about the whole thing. I'll never forget the way his car looked at replaying that night with him so many times, so I was pretty sure it was his car, but it looked like it hadn't been touched in years. The windows were rolled down, and sure as hell, the inside had seen more than its fair share of monsoons and wind damage, with the whole car covered in a layer of dirt. It was weird that it hadn't been towed or anything, but like I said, the complex itself was pretty run down, so I assume anyone hardly bothered to check around for old cars. I rummaged through that car from top to bottom but couldn't find any signs of anyone living in it. I went for the glove compartment last only because it was already half open and I couldn't see that there was a black leather case for the car in it. I flipped through the pages a bit when some Polaroid pictures we had taken nearly a decade ago fell out onto my lap. They were faded pretty badly, but good enough to see our faces from back then. So, Kith, at some point, came back to find us all gone. To make it worse, the license plate on the car was gone, so I had nothing more to go on when I started. Ever since then, I've been doing everything I can to try and track him down. I keep going back to the arcade on the weekends to play and check for him, but I really don't have much to go on. While my old friends are intrigued by the whole thing, we simply have no information about him other than the picture. I just want to think that he went on to live a happy, meaningful life, and I want him to know that his circle never forgot about him, and at least one of us will keep trying until he knows that he is okay. It was 1995. I was 19 years old and going out to a club. It was a long drive, and a group of us decided to carpool. It was myself, my sister, her boyfriend, and three other friends. The owner of the car dropped acid and was in no condition to drive, so my friend, let's call him Bob, offered to drive. Just as we were getting ready to pile in, I got a phone call. An ex of mine also wanted to go that night, so I stuck around with a friend and waited for her. She got there, and we were off. It wasn't more than five minutes into the drive that we were stuck in a traffic jam. It was bad. Backed up for about a mile. I remember joking and singing Everybody Hurts by Rem, for those of you reading this and not really of the good MTV generation, that video takes place during a traffic jam. 
We finally inched along and got to a cop who was directing traffic and asked what happened. He told us it was a car wreck. We think nothing of it and drive to the club. An hour later, we arrive, but the other car isn't there. We try to figure out why, maybe they decided not to go or got lost. I start to get a pit in my stomach. My friends tell me everything is fine. The pit gets worse. We stay out all night, and I finally get back home around 6 am I walk in to find my family sobbing uncontrollably. My mom walks up and tells me, there's been an accident. I went numb. My sister and her boyfriend had been killed in the car wreck that caused the traffic jam we were stuck in. That I fucking joked about. To this day, I still beat myself up about it. My mother passed away from cancer two years ago. A fortnight beforehand, she had gone into the hospital for an overnight stay. She ended up spending the rest of her life there. The cancer had spread to her brain, so one day I went in to visit her, and she was fine and dandy, although exhausted. The next day, we spoke on the phone briefly, and again, she seemed fine. The day after, I go in for the visit, and I'm greeted by the most unholy screeches and wailing I've ever heard in my life, she was also deaf, and the nurses failed to realize she needed hearing aids to be able to hear anything at all. There she is, my mother, staring into my eyes and crying while flailing her limbs around and screaming uncontrollably. The look in her eyes. Was so scared and confused yet completely aware. She eventually calmed down a bit, that is, until my siblings, aged between 18 and 12, walked in. One moment, a bunch of happy school kids are excited to see their mother enter the room, and mere seconds later. The looks on their faces, trying to be as brave and calm as possible to not make it worse for her, and the look in her eyes, streaming with tears, trying to communicate with them, will haunt me until the day I die. When I was 14 years old, I saw a man I had never seen before in my house at 3 am I yelled, but he just calmly walked into a bedroom we were currently using as an office. My parents woke up from my yelling and investigated the room. No one was there. This was the beginning of many, many odd nights of unexplainable events that happened at that house. I don't sleep well when I go back home. Added creepiness, my mother recently passed away in her sleep in that room. I don't believe in ghosts, really. I think reality is what we make it. But no one believes me when I tell them this story. They either say I was dreaming or think I'm just trying to scare them or something. I was completely wide awake, and I do not joke about the paranormal. I haven't told this story to very many people because I just feel insane. Maybe I took this question too literally, but I suppose I was haunted a couple times. My niece passed away when she was 15, I was 16. When it happened, her guardians, paternal grandparents, said that she had overdosed. At her funeral, all of the adults were doing the and this is why you kids should listen speeches. It made me really mad, and to this day, I wish I would have had the courage to get up and tell them the funeral wasn't a place to chastise the teens. It was a funeral, for God's sake. Anyway, it turns out she didn't die from an overdose. Her death was ruled homicide by asphyxiation. The grandparents were just covering for their son, her dad. I still sometimes have horrid thoughts of what she went through in her last minutes. Her dad murdered her. She must have been so scared. It haunts me to think she suffered. I was walking home from work one night. It was August, so cold and wonderful. I was in a really brilliant mood for no reason at all, and I was singing cloud busting, feeling like the most incredible things were going to happen. When I got home, my whole family was waiting. I made some silly comments, and nobody laughed. They all came over to stand around me, and my father said, sad news, Gorky. And I knew it was bad. I looked around, hoping that the dogs hadn't come out to greet us, that would have meant they'd escaped again and gotten hit by a car this time, but I saw them and knew it was worse. They closed in around me, held me, and told me that my favorite cousin, who was like a brother, had been a passenger in a car accident and was dead. All I could say was no, no, no. My father cried for the first time that day, and he had gone to help identify the body. My mother told me that she'd been dreading telling me, and my stoic brother just held on to me while I flopped to sit on the floor like a toddler having a tantrum, and all I could think was, how could I have been so happy and known everything was going to be amazing and been so, so wrong? I can't understand how I didn't know somehow and how I could have been so happy. It's not logical, but it still haunts me. I was 19 when I was out with some friends when my dad suddenly called me to come home. My mom was having stomach pain, but no one in my family thought it was anything terribly serious. We took her to the hospital the day before, and the doctors said she was fine. I was biking home when I saw an EMS truck, a fire truck, and police cars all around my house. My dad was talking to the police, and I saw from the side my mom's feet limping around a bit. The paramedics were giving her CPR or something, 
and she was unconscious. Just seeing my mom, not fully but barely, just gives me horrors every time I think about it. She died from intestinal cancer that was blocking her large intestine. I didn't even ride to the hospital with her because the police were interviewing my dad, who was frazzled, so I had to stay with him. Every time I ever see an EMS, I literally just freeze up and can't think of anything else. It just gives me shivers up my spine and everything, man. When I was around 7, me and my mother were playing Scrabble, and we heard a big bang outside of our house. Living next to a boulevard, we knew an accident had already happened, and we rushed outside to see it. The scene itself was quite shocking, we saw a small body on the pavement. Fearing the worst, every parent covered their child's eyes. My mother went to help the nurse living next door give this child first aid, so I was the only child to witness all of it. When they turned him, all I could see for a face was blood everywhere. I quickly realized who the kid was, he was a friend. He was unpopular, he was made fun of often, but I always liked him, we were next to each other in class. He died on the spot. What haunts me about it is the lifeless face I saw of someone I knew and talked to often. The next day at school, most children were laughing at him, saying horrible things, and just making fun of it. It was that day that I realized how cruel some people can be. I'm not sure why this haunts me, I'm not sure I'd even call it haunting, I just think about it a lot, and it makes me feel. Not good, I guess. I have quite a large group of friends who are all friends with each other, but because there's so many of us, not everyone is close friends. So within the group, I have two friends who I would call my best friends. These are the greatest people anyone could ask for as friends, they've sat in the hospital with me for hours and came to my house in the middle of the night to give me a hug, all that good shit will call them Jay and Lucy. Around 5 or 6 months ago, we were on a night out, and everyone was having a great time. Towards the end of the night, I looked over at the bar and saw Lucy standing, ordering more drinks, and Jay standing right behind her. He was sort of holding her around the waist, but she was pushing his hands off her. Not in a get the fuck off me way, but like slowly removing his hands. It just hit me in that moment, there's something going on between them. I felt sick. We left the bar shortly after, and Jay and Lucy were ahead of the group, he had his arm around her, and they were hurrying off. I felt rage. Since then, I just know what they're up to. Every time they go to bed early, leave the group, or say they're not going out, I know what they're doing. I know I should be happy that they're both happy, but it makes me feel so angry, sad, and lonely. Some days, it's all I can think of, and I don't know why. I don't know why I feel this way, and I wish I didn't. I wish I could talk about it with them, but I know I can't. I just keep thinking back to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. when Harry wakes up after spending the night in Grimmauld Place with Ron and Hermione and sees that they've been holding hands during the night, and he feels so lonely and mad at them. It helps me take solace because at least someone, no matter how fictional they are, has felt the same. Something that has haunted me over the years is finding my neighbor dead. It happened about four years ago, on Thanksgiving. I had noticed something was a little strange because the mail was building up and there hadn't been any movement for a few weeks. The cars were in the same spot, nothing had changed. So, I knock to see if everything's okay and get no response. I go to the back door, and that's when I see her. The puddle of blood was black, and there was a gun lying next to her. Little pieces of brain fragments are scattered everywhere. I felt weird sleeping for the longest time because she was all I could think about. My friends and I would walk back and forth to the garage and walk right past her for weeks, not having the slightest clue she was there dead the whole time. I recently moved out of the house next to my neighbor. It's probably about 3 minutes from where I currently live, but every time I drive by the house, I can't help but think of my poor neighbor who shot herself in the head. In undergrad, I volunteered for the local hospice and provided respite care every week for a family. The daughter was caring for her mother with end-stage COPD and needed some time to run errands and pick up prescriptions. I visited every week for over a year, pretty unusual for hospice, as most patients tend to pass within 6 months, and got to know everyone really well. The mother had a touch of dementia in addition to COPD, and her short-term memory wasn't always there, but she was very kind and had these wonderful blue eyes. The daughter would sometimes break down and cry, and I would console her. Anyway, it's January when the mother's health really declines, she visits the hospice house and passes away soon after. It's a really busy time for me, I just started a new job, classes are crazy, I have med school interviews that month, and I don't get to visit. I should have been there for them, and in the end, I didn't even call or send a card, like I should have. I don't know why. I wrote about the mother in my medical school personal statement, and it still bothers me years later that I abandon the family in their time of need. I think about them a lot, and I want the daughter to know I got into medical school and have never forgotten her mother, 
but I've never reached out. I'm 18 and I have a speech problem. It's not that people can't understand anything I say, but my voice is very distorted, I stutter, and I have trouble saying certain words. Almost everyone that I interact with is split into two groups. They either think I have a mental problem and talk to me like I have one, or they ignore what I say and ridicule me. I'm asked to repeat myself a lot, resulting in many cringe moments. I can't even go through a freaking drive through at McDonald's. I'll be leaving school soon, and I really don't know what I want to do with my life. I can't see myself working a job that requires interacting with people because what employer would pick me over someone that customers can actually understand? I've never had any close friends at all. I'm not good at building bonds with people. I pretty much feel like I'm going to fail in life, and that's what haunts me. Mine isn't negative per se, so the term haunt isn't the most applicable, but it's something that I think about a lot. First, a little setup. Currently, I am engaged to be married to my high school sweetheart after dating for more than seven years. She is the love of my life and my best friend. We started dating our freshman year in high school, and to say we didn't have our rough spots would be a lie. There were moments where we both wanted to end it for one reason or another, but we have always come out on the other side and became closer each time. But there is one incident where I always wonder, what if? It was my sophomore year in high school, so very early in our relationship, and for whatever reason I'm starting to get bored with the situation and don't feel the same way about her, I later learn this is the exact moment where the honeymoon stage ended. I tell her my feelings not in a let's break up way but in a I need some time to think about it kind of way. Well, we are both kind of standoffish with each other for a few days. That is, until one day after school I say, I love you, more as a habit than anything else, and she starts crying and hugging me. I am a little confused because we say this all the time, and also because we are young and think we know what actual love is. She tells me that she was about to break up with me because what I said had hurt her. Me saying I love you to her meant that I wasn't still feeling that way anymore, even though I still was. Anyway, I go along with it because I don't want to destroy her after this moment of pure happiness. I just kind of thought that I'd let it go for a bit, and if I felt the same, I'd end it. But those feelings never came back up. The relationship started to become enjoyable again. We stopped trying to act like boyfriends or girlfriends and more like best friends and support systems. Now this isn't the closest we have been to ending it. We have had some major fights, but we always work it out. But in this situation, it came down to something that I said in a fairly offhanded way. It would have actually been easier to have said nothing. In conclusion, it always haunts me to wonder what my life would be like if I hadn't said those three words at that exact moment in time. First of all, I would like to say, I don't believe in ghosts. My parents told me that when I was about two to three years old, I used to talk to this man in the wall. Spooky stuff would happen, like my dad rushing to my room at 3 a.m. because he heard a loud noise, and my room, always kept neat and cleaned by my mom, was filled with all my toys on the floor. One time, one of my mom's girlfriends babysat me. When my parents came home, she would just sit there, white as snow in the face, with a cold cup of coffee ranting about this old man walking up and down the hallway. My parents decided to move after that. At our new house, I would sit quietly playing on my brand new PlayStation 2 when suddenly glass candle holders would explode, leaving glass all over the floor. Because of these events, it's almost impossible for anyone to scare or chalk me out of nowhere. I find paranormal activity, and horror movies in general, boring. I'm used to stuff happening out of nowhere. My parents get divorced, and I move to the suburbs to start fresh. Sure enough, my mom is convinced the entire first floor of the new house is haunted by a little girl ghost. I say I don't believe her, but I hear her footsteps and the other noises she makes too. This results in me getting the entire first floor to myself. My mom gets a boyfriend. A real tough guy with tattoos, you know the type. I like him, he likes me. He moves in. There's a toilet on each of the two floors in the house. The one downstairs breaks, and no one knows how or why. My stepdad then has to take a shit at 3 a.m. and has to use the bathroom on my floor. No big deal, he's a tough guy. He runs out screaming, forgetting his pants in his panic, screaming that the little girl came into the bathroom, making tiny, tiny cuts to the tips of all of his fingers. Which, in his own words, hurt into the core of his being. I make lots of friends at my new school in the new town. But no one wants to come hang out at my house. It turns out that the kid living there before me moved because the house was haunted by a little girl. This information reaches my mom, and she freaks. This makes sense in her head, but I firmly still don't believe in ghosts or the afterlife, for that matter. We moved again. But not into a house this time. We have to live in a goddamn trailer park because, according to her logic, ghosts only haunt houses. 
Stepdad is fine with this, he loves our family and will follow us anywhere. One night, it wouldn't surprise me if it was like 3 am, I was awakened by the sensation of pressure on my body. I open my eyes and see this woman sitting on top of me, holding my arms down. Her bloody eyes were staring into my soul. Her black, greasy hair fell on my face. I can literally feel her hair on my face. I am sitting alone in my apartment right now, and I have to say that writing this is not easy. My first reaction is to summon all of my strength in an attempt to throw her off of me. But she is so strong. I can't move. I can't even turn my head. She just sits there, staring into my eyes. At this point, I'm in total panic. My heart is racing as I do my best to lift my arms. She keeps me locked down. Staring. This goes on for about 40 minutes before I decide to give up and close my eyes. It was the only choice I had left. I have no idea how long I had my eyes closed before I fell back to sleep, but I was determined not to open them. The next day I wake up, I'm fine, and everyone is acting normal. I never told anyone what happened that night except some close friends. The thing is. It wasn't a dream. I was awake. I could hear people sleeping, but I couldn't scream for help. I refuse to believe in ghosts and have simply dismissed this as some sort of hallucination. I might have been unable to move, and the brain sees what it needs to see. Something is holding me down. It was my nightmares brought to life, and this haunts me, Reddit. This haunts me. First of all, I would like to say, I don't believe in ghosts. My parents told me that when I was about two to three years old, I used to talk to this man in the wall. Spooky stuff would happen, like my dad rushing to my room at 3 am because he heard a loud noise, and my room, always kept neat and cleaned by my mom, was filled with all my toys on the floor. One time, one of my mom's girlfriends babysat me. When my parents came home, she would just sit there. White as snow in the face, with a cold cup of coffee ranting about this old man walking up and down the hallway. My parents decided to move after that. At our new house, I would sit quietly playing on my brand new PlayStation 2 when suddenly glass candle holders would explode, leaving glass all over the floor. Because of these events, it's almost impossible for anyone to scare or chalk me out of nowhere. I find paranormal activity, and horror movies in general, boring. I'm used to stuff happening out of nowhere. My parents get divorced, and I move to the suburbs to start fresh. Sure enough, my mom is convinced the entire first floor of the new house is haunted by a little girl ghost. I say I don't believe her, but I hear her footsteps and the other noises she makes too. This results in me getting the entire first floor to myself. My mom gets a boyfriend. A real tough guy with tattoos, you know the type. I like him, he likes me. He moves in. There's a toilet on each of the two floors in the house. The one downstairs breaks, and no one knows how or why. My stepdad then has to take a shit at 3 am and has to use the bathroom on my floor. No big deal, he's a tough guy. He runs out screaming, forgetting his pants in his panic, screaming that the little girl came into the bathroom, making tiny, tiny cuts to the tips of all of his fingers. Which, in his own words, hurt into the core of his being. I make lots of friends at my new school in the new town. But no one wants to come hang out at my house. It turns out that the kid living there before me moved because the house was haunted by a little girl. This information reaches my mom, and she freaks. This makes sense in her head but I firmly still don't believe in ghosts or the afterlife, for that matter. We moved again. But not into a house this time. We have to live in a goddamn trailer park because, according to her logic, ghosts only haunt houses. Stepdad is fine with this, he loves our family and will follow us anywhere. One night, it wouldn't surprise me if it was like 3 am, I was awakened by the sensation of pressure on my body. I open my eyes and see this woman sitting on top of me, holding my arms down. Her bloody eyes were staring into my soul. Her black, greasy hair fell on my face. I can literally feel her hair on my face. I am sitting alone in my apartment right now, and I have to say that writing this is not easy. My first reaction is to summon all of my strength in an attempt to throw her off of me. But she is so strong. I can't move. I can't even turn my head. She just sits there, staring into my eyes. At this point, I'm in total panic. My heart is racing as I do my best to lift my arms. She keeps me locked down. Staring. This goes on for about 40 minutes before I decide to give up and close my eyes. It was the only choice I had left. I have no idea how long I had my eyes closed before I fell back to sleep, but I was determined not to open them. The next day I wake up, I'm fine, and everyone is acting normal. I never told anyone what happened that night except some close friends. The thing is. It wasn't a dream. I was awake. 
I could hear people sleeping, but I couldn't scream for help. I refuse to believe in ghosts and have simply dismissed this as some sort of hallucination. I might have been unable to move, and the brain sees what it needs to see. Something is holding me down. It was my nightmares brought to life, and this haunts me, Reddit. This haunts me. My friends and I sadly used to get high with whatever we could. We were 15 yo in that time and in weekends we go to camping until Sunday, that day besides my friends some other people were with us, and at some point I was just resting and cannot move my legs, I was really high and hugging a friend who was experimenting a bad trip, and I started seeing my friend getting pushed by other guy and they started fighting, at some moment my friend was crying and the other guy took a rock and start smashing his head with it, over, and over again until the screaming and crying stopped, I try to get up and break the fight but I don't do a shit to stop them. A few hours later I just started crawling to my friend, because I couldn't still move my legs, I just watch his corpse, just laying peacefully there, at like 3 am 5 of my friends and I decided to bury him there and not saying a word to nobody and we did, and mark the tree where his improvised grave was with his nickname. A year later, I was in rehab, and in my first weeks experimenting with the process of detox, I used to see him a lot sitting in the corner of the room, just watching me and asking me things like when are you going to die too? All of my friends died of overdose at some point as the years passed, and I'm the only one alive to know this, including you, so welcome to my secret. I like to make up my own words for songs. I really like singing along, and if I don't know the words, I just sing what sounds close, whether it makes sense or not. Well, I was at a concert with my boyfriend, and I was super into it. The music was great, the energy was amazing, and they were playing a song that I loved. I wasn't the only one singing along, but I was the only one singing the completely wrong words. People around us gave me weird looks, and I started getting pushed around even harder. In hindsight, I'm sure they thought I wasn't a real fan or whatever. Walking out of the concert, my boyfriend made a sweet and almost subtle comment, telling me that I really shouldn't sing my made-up words at concerts. It haunts me to this day. Every time I hear this specific song now, I get a feeling of dread and embarrassment. This was years ago, but still, randomly, it will pop up in my head and mortify me all over again. I was about 8 and in the back seat. My mom had decided she wanted to break up with her abusive ex once and for all, so we were driving out to where he'd been staying at his cousin's chicken farm. He and his friends came out. He was yelling and started to shove, so my mom came back to the car. She told me to lock the doors. Before I knew what was happening, her ex hit my aunt so hard that it knocked her flat on her ass, and he ran over to the car. He started to beat on the window with every ounce of force he had in his body. I sat there in terrified silence, too scared to cry. I swore that the window was going to shatter, but it never did. The sound of his fist pounding against the glass, his flurry of angry curse words, and my mother's sobs from the front seat will forever be burned into my memory. Driving back home, no one bothered to ask me how I was. I was not fucking okay. Every time I think about it, I get shaky and want to cry. I couldn't stand when people would fight in high school because that's the only thing I could think about when I saw all the people standing around and watching like a bunch of animals. One time, my friend got attacked by a girl while we were walking to class. I stood there like a deer caught in the headlights until it was over, and then I started to sob uncontrollably. I keep thinking that I'm over it, but every once in a while something will happen, and all of a sudden I'm 8 years old again, terrified out of my mind in the back seat of an old black Honda, wondering why I'm even there in the first place. About 13 or 14 months ago, my dad was completely healthy at the age of 64 and had never broken a bone or had a serious illness his entire life. In November last year, he was diagnosed with esophageal cancer, started chemotherapy, and had surgery to get the tumor removed. He lost nearly 10 stones during the chemotherapy and after the operation. He went from about 18 stone down to 8 stone as a 6 foot male. We thought the operation went well at first, but there were a multitude of complications that came up in the months after and then we found out the cancer had spread all over his body. Over the course of 10 or so months, I watched my dad, who was always a happy and energetic man, slowly waste away into a quiet shell, who in his last days expressed that he just wanted to die. He stopped breathing in the hospital on August 8th of this year. The memories of him slowly getting thinner, quieter, and not having the strength to even get out of bed and walk 5 feet to the bathroom, and then the memory of him stopping breathing in the hospital, keep me awake at night. I met this kid my freshman year of high school in my math class. Funny guy, really nice ROTC cadet. We stayed friends throughout our high school career, not super close friends but good friends, he was also dating one of my best friends in senior year. Fast forward to about 6 months after graduation. My high school sweetheart and I popped into our favorite Chinese food buffet for lunch, and lo and behold, 
my friend and another of our mutual friends were eating. We hadn't seen each other since graduation, so we stopped and chatted for a bit to catch up. He tells me that he joined the army right out of high school, I always knew that was his plan, so I wasn't surprised, and that he had just recently received his orders to ship out the following week, this was in 2006. Being the awkward 18-year-old girl that I was and this being the first friend I knew going to an active war zone, I didn't really know what to say. My response? Don't die and come home. Two days later, I found out that he and a friend were out and about, and my friend lost control of his vehicle on a wet dirt road and slammed into a tree directly in the driver's side door. He was in a coma for two days, then finally passed away. The last words I ever said to him were don't die. I've never felt more guilty about anything in my entire life. I couldn't go to the funeral, and I have since moved away from my hometown and have never visited his grave. I've never said goodbye. I have two large scars on my right hand from a time after school when we were joking around, and I scraped my hand pretty badly. I literally have a daily reminder of this kid. He was such a great guy, and even seven years later, I cannot forgive myself for what I said, even though logically I know that it isn't my fault.